Alrighty, well we've covered break-even point and CVP from the perspective of a company that makes one product. Uh, with a little bit of an adjustment we can kind of extrapolate that idea out to companies that make multiple products. And the way we do that is we kind of assume that they have static ratios between the different products that they sell and we kind of group those different products in a basket and we kind of account for a basket of products instead of just one product individually. So let's go ahead and look at an example. We've got Males Male Accessories. They are a purveyor of wallets and money clips. So we, they do two products. Historically the firm sales have been three wallets for every money clip. So the ratio of sales that they have going on here at Males is going to be three to one. So I'm going to go ahead and jot that down here. Three to one for every three wallets that we sell we sell one money clip so that's our basket our basket every time we sell one basket we're really selling three wallets and one money clip what we're going to do is we're going to can kind of calculate a contribution margin for the entire basket so it says every wallet has an eight dollar contribution margin and every money clip has a six dollar cm so we're just going to take three times eight dollars and that gives me twenty four for the wallet. We're going to take one times six and do that math in my head. Six bucks. Alright, so we're going to add those two together and we get a thirty dollar contribution margin per basket. Okay? So if we continue on it says we have fixed cost in the amount of hundred and eighty thousand our selling prices of wallets and money clips are 30 and 15 our tax rate is 40 percent so question a what amount of revenue do we need to break even how many wallets and money clips does that represent so we have a simple break even problem and you guys can handle that from all our previous experience doing those before we're just going to take fixed cost and divide them by our contribution margin so our fixed cost it says in a problem hundred and eighty thousand we calculated for our, every basket we get a thirty dollar contribution margin so we're going to divide a hundred and eighty thousand by thirty and we come up with a even six thousand baskets or buckets okay so every time we sell a bucket we're really selling again three wallets and one money clip so if we sell six thousand of these kind of baskets of goods we're just going to take that and multiply it by three and by one and that'll tell us how many individual money clips and wallets we sold so we sold really if we sold sixteen thousand buckets of goods we sold eighteen thousand wallets and we sold six thousand money clips so it wants to know how much revenue does that represent or do we need to break even so we're just going to take that 18,000 wallets and 6,000 money clips and multiply them by our selling price 30 and 15 dollars respectively I'm going to do the math on those 18,000 times 30 it's going to give us 540,000 I'm going to get the rest of my five there 6,000 times 15 it's going to be 90,000 so the answer to part A, where it says how much revenue is needed to break even, our break even revenue is going to be $630,000. How many wallets and money clips does that represent? Well, 18,000 and 6,000. That's how we do part A. Part B, same idea, but only now we need to include a pre-tax profit of $150,000. We talked about how to do that in our previous examples too. We're just going to add that in with our fixed cost and that would be another amount that we'd have to cover through our contribution margin. So 180000 plus our pre-tax profit that we're wanting of 150000 We'll take those and add them together and then we're going to divide by our $30 contribution margin. So of course we get 330000 divided by 30 or 11,000 buckets of goods 
And again, we go through the same process. Every bucket is considered to have three wallets and one money clip. So if we sell 11,000 of those, we're really selling 33,000 wallets and 11,000 money clips. And multiply it again by the selling price. And we get 33,000 times 30. 990,000. We take our 11,000 times 15. We should get 165,000. Add the two together. And we get 1,155,000 and 155,000 even. So our answer for part B, how much revenue is needed to earn a pre-tax profit of 150,000 would be 1,155,000. Part C wants to know the amount of revenue to get an after-tax profit of 150,000. So again, we have to go through and convert that after-tax profit number to a pre-tax profit number. The way we do that is with a simple little division here. 150,000 desired after-tax profit, we're going to divide that by 1 minus our tax rate. So 150,000 divided by, what was our tax rate here? 40%. So it would be 150,000 divided by 60%. And we do the math on that, we get 250,000. So we'll go through the same processes in B, only we'll use 250,000 instead of 150,000. So our fixed cost. 180,000. We're going to add our new desired pre tax profit of 250,000. And we're going to divide that by 30, our CM. Okay? So 180,000 plus 250,000 is going to be 430,000. Divide that by 30. And we get a, if we do a little bit of rounding here, 14,333 baskets of goods. Okay, so once again, we can go through the process. Every basket of goods is three in one. You're probably getting tired of this process by now. 14,333 times three is going to, we'll just round that up. We'll say 43,000. 14,333 times 1 gives me the exact same thing. So we'll do our math, multiply by our selling prices, and we multiply that out. We get 1.29 million. Add to that the money clips, 14,333 times 15, and we get 200. 14,995. Add it all up. And we get 1,504,995. That amount represents the total revenue that we would basically have to generate to earn an after tax profit of 150,000. Alrighty. A, B, and C have been knocked out. Let's move on to letter D in the problem. Take a look at that one. If Mel wants to get revenue, I'm sorry, if Mel earns the revenue determined in B, that would have been a 1.155 million, but does so by selling five wallets for every two money clip, what would the pre-tax profit or loss be? So we're switching up our kind of baskets of goods here. Normally or originally we had three wallets for one money clip. Now we're doing five wallets for every two money clips. So our basket of goods is shifting a little bit here. So let's go ahead and we'll start by using that revenue number from B that they want and figuring out how many um, wallets and money clips that represents at five and two. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to start with 1,155,000. That's our revenue from B. And we're going to divide that by our selling price for wallets times five. That's how many wallets are going to be in every basket. And I'm going to add to that 
the selling price of every money clip multiplied by 2. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm figuring out of that 1.155 million, if we're talking about 5 wallets and 2 clips per basket, how many baskets did we really sell? So 1,155,000 and that is 150 plus 30 so that is simply going to divide by 180 and we do the math on that 6,417 baskets that we sold, baskets of goods. Okay, And every basket represents 5 wallets and 2 money clips. So that's the number of baskets that we kind of sold here. What we need to do now is figure out how many wallets and how many money clips are in or that we sold overall. So kind of like we did before, we'll divide that, or sorry, multiply that out, 6,417 multiplied by 5 and multiplied by 2. Okay. Thirty two thousand eighty five wallets were sold. Sixty four seventeen multiplied by two. Twelve thousand eight hundred thirty four money clips. So that's the amount of product that we sold. We need to figure out if you remember back in our problem, what would the pre tax profit or loss be? Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna multiply by my contribution margin that kind of shows me the cost per unit minus my variable cost so as we saw before nothing changed on contribution margin it's still eight and six so we'll multiply that by eight multiply that by six and do the math on that 32.85 times eight 256,680 12, 8, 34, multiplied by 6, 77,004. I'm going to add these two together and we get 333,684. Now what that number represents is our really, I don't want to say profit, that's our contribution margin in total. That's the total revenue that we got from selling both of those products minus the variable cost of those products. Okay, So we need to back out our fixed cost if we're wanting to figure out the total profit before tax. Fixed costs are still 180,000 as we saw before. So I'm going to minus 180,000 from what I just calculated and I get 153,684. That's the amount of pre-tax profit that we generate if we sell the amount of revenue from problem B only this time with a basket ratio of 5 to 2. Okay, So notice that it's a little bit higher than 150,000 and that's because we switched in a higher margin product. So we're selling more of a higher margin product than we did before. So that's kind of how you'd walk through CVP in a multi-product setting. If you have any questions about that, please let me know.